Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Friday, March 20th, 2020. And here is some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, it was mixed. Over in Europe, it was up. And in the United States, it was up in the beginning and down at the end of the day, down over 900 points. But yesterday, U.S. stocks closed higher after central banks' actions. U.S. stocks closed Thursday after central banks deployed a flurry of emergency measures to try to buffer the global economy from fallout stemming from the coronavirus pandemic. The fallout is not stemming from the coronavirus pandemic. It's stemming from the politicians that are causing the problems, that are deciding for all of us what to do. So don't blame it on Rosie, queen of coronavirus. Policymakers have moved aggressively this week to stop the strains in funding markets from aggravating what they believe will already be severe halt to economic growth. Severe halt to economic growth? The greatest depression has begun. In the last 24 hours, the Federal Reserve has launched a new lending facility to backstop U.S. monetary mutual funds and markets and extended its currency exchange programs with other central banksters. Socialism for the rich, capitalism for the poor, making the stuff up as they go along. So today again, Dow tumbles 900 points to end Wall Street's worst week since 2008, the panic of 08. Stocks attempted to rally on Friday but failed, concluding one of the most volatile weeks on Wall Street ever as investors grapple with mounting fears over the coronavirus economic blow. Not the coronavirus economic blow, the blowhards that are blowing the global economy apart. So don't blame it on the virus. Sources told CNBC that Ronin Capital, a clearing firm, a clearing firm at the CME Group, was unable to meet its capital requirements. The news weighed on stocks in the final two hours of trading because it was yet another sign of the pressures building on some firms amid the sharp downturn in markets. Among the other factors weighing down the markets once again Friday afternoon were the stay-at-home order for New York State, a swift reversal in crude prices and a strengthening dollar. The rollover in oil, which has lost half its value in a month, is having a ripple effect. The Dow dropped more than 17% for the week, the biggest one-week fall since October 2008, when it fell 18.2%. Both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ also had their worst weekly performances since the financial crisis. And the Dow is now 35.2% below its all-time high level from February, while the S&P 500 is 32.1% below its high. The Federal Reserve announced this week a number of stimulus measures in addition to Congress efforts. The U.S. Central Bank announced Friday it is expanding its asset purchase program to include municipal bonds. These measures, however, haven't assuaged investor fears. More than 14,000 cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed in the United States, along with 200 deaths. 200 deaths in a population of 327 million people, most of them elderly. The facts are all there and ill. We are going to see a double bear market. This thing's going to go down, I believe, 40%, at least. And again, they could shovel more money in, do what they want to do, and it could temporarily prop it up. When earnings reports come out, this thing's going down. And the billionaires are going to go bust this time, too. Oil falls 11% on track for worst month on record.
As the world's richest nations poured unprecedented aid into the global economy to stop the coronavirus-driven recession. Not a recession, it's a depression. They're calling it a recession. Everyone are calling it a recession. Bank of America, blah, 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 blah. It's not a recession, it's a global depression. As the spread of coronavirus brings much of the world to a halt, nations have poured increasing stimulus into the economies while central banks have flooded markets with cheap dollars to ease funding. Flooded the markets. This is not capitalism, ain't capitalism, socialism for the rich, corporatism, capitalism for we the little people. U.S. crude Brent have both collapsed about 40% in the past two weeks. Oil storage capacity nears limit as virus outbreak crushes demand. Not virus outbreak crushing demand. Demand is being crushed by politicians who are making all the decisions. Have you seen any scientific facts? Have you seen any quantitative data? Social distance from here. No, no, social distance from there. No, we're going to close down this. No, we're going to close down that. Only these many people, only that many people. No scientific data. Zero, nada, nothing. Price collapse leaves U.S. shale group battling to restructure debt. You've got all the details in your trends journal about just the things that I'm talking about now with oil. On and on and on, the debt bubble is bursting. It has burst. They're not going to be able to pay this off. It's the greatest depression. It's going to be way worse than the 2008 panic because of all the cheap money that they pumped into the system. Over $250 trillion worth of debt. ECB unveils surprised bond buying plan. And the ECB said it would buy 780 billion euros of public and private sector assets. Private sector assets assets from the bigs, not the littles. You could go bust. We don't care. Central banks cut rates as options ebb. Options have ebbed a long time ago. We've been writing about this in the Trends Journal. This collapse began in August, as we saw it. And then they started pumping all that money into the repo markets and artificially pumped it up. All the data is in your trends journal. The details are there. One by one, the central banksters were not going to be able to pull this off. Central banks around the world cut interest rates and indicated they were considering taking actions to support their currencies yesterday in the latest steps to combat the financial and economic consequences of the coronavirus pandemic. It's not the consequences of the coronavirus pandemic. It's the consequences of the politicians that are making the decisions to totally close down the world. The next coronavirus financial crisis, record piles of risky corporate debt. Again, the details are in your trends journal week after week after week after week after week. Years of low interest rates and easy credit have allowed Companies across the board to borrow big, building a record $10 trillion, mountains in debt. Lenders expect the vast majority of that to be repaid on time. That's the Wall Street Journal, not making this up, not making it up. U.S. looks at new tools to fight fallout. Again, the U.S. escalated its response to the coronavirus pandemic as growing shutdowns increased. Fears of economic fallout. Fears of economic fallout collapse. Again, it was failing before, and they've run out of tools. Ah, Aussie dollar at 55 cents. Stocks plunge in Korea, the world's 
The world is desperate for dollars. Now think about this. The dollar's going up because everybody is also currencies, as I've been saying now for a year, are so weak. Now you have all this debt that's dollar-based. How are they going to pay it back? With their currencies collapsing. That's why I mentioned the Aussie. They're all going down. They get all this dollar debt. Chinese are filled with dollar debt. The dollar's getting stronger. Their currencies are getting weaker. And Bitcoin's doing well because people are looking for an alternative. Fannie and Freddie suspend foreclosures. Oh, thank you, Fannie. Thank you, Freddie. It's great we're equal gender equal here, Freddie and Fannie. Affects some 182 American homeowners who are in some stage of foreclosure. They're giving them a 60-day suspension. Great, great. In two months, man, that dough will come running in and you'll be able to pay off your debt. Wave of layoffs socks workers nationwide. Employers are cutting shifts, suspending work, and starting to lay off workers as the new coronavirus devastates businesses across the country. The virus is not devastating businesses across the country. It's your governors, it's your presidents, it's your prime ministers all over the world. I'm in charge, I'm in charge, I'll tell you what to do. Boeing begs for $60 billion to salvage sector. Hey, if Boeing needs the dough, give it to them. Lufthansa warns it will emerge smaller from virus pandemic. The world's second largest airline, Lufthansa, has warned that the aviation industry will be hit harder than the rest of the global economy by the coronavirus pandemic. Again, it's not the pandemic, it's the politicians. One after another, you're going to see big collapses. I read to you last week, or earlier in the week, about... Um, uh, British Airways, how worried the CEO was and sent a message to all the workers. And now it's much, much worse. Ford borrows $15.4 billion and suspends dividends to deal with shutdown costs. It's the largest drawdown any company has made because of the pandemic. The $15.4 billion is intended to offset the cost of the shutdown, which begins today and will last till at least March 30th. Ten days? How are you going to make this stuff up? How many days do they know? Here, check this out. Antiques, art, vintage automobiles, new automobiles. Boom. Prices way down. We are going to go not only into the greatest depression, but into the greatest deflation. The prices of everything are going to fall. Does that mean it's going to be cheapy to buy it? No, because the values of the currencies are going to go down with it, along with the dollar. Only a matter of time. Cereal makers, General Mills cheered by surge in sales as shoppers stock up on Cheerio cereals and green giant canned vegetables, all that healthy stuff. Well, you think we are ready to explode one of our top trends? It's going to get a lot worse. They're eating junk and staying home because shift to home workouts takes heavy toll on gym operators and people aren't worried. They're stuck at home. Think of all the businesses that are going down. Lockdowns force cinemas into intermission. And many hotels are sh set to shut their doors. Hundreds of hotels in New York City are expected to close, laying off and furloughing tens of thousands of workers. Not only New York City, all over the world. And then you think about the restaurants in the hotels, all the deliveries to the hotels, the people that pick up the trash, you know, the, 
it's, it's one industry after another that's being hit by this. In Seattle, an early hotspot homebound life takes its toll. Concerned about theft, closed stores around the city put signs on their doors saying they have removed all cash from the register. As I was saying, we are going to see a crime wave the likes of which we've never experienced before. Homeless like we've never experienced before. That's why people are going out and buying guns because they know how bad it's going to get. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. You think you have a refugee and immigration problems now? Haven't seen anything yet. Italy's virus death tolls tops China's. Data compiled by Italy's National Health Institute, its top disease control body, shows that 87% of those who have died are over 70 years old. Almost 13% of Italians are in their 70s. And the flu was hitting Italy before coronavirus. And the flu has been a worldwide deadly killer. And we'll get to the numbers. Ah, this is wonderful. U.S. hits Tehran with new sanctions. Isn't that great? Tehran's having a uh, Iran's having a terrible time. They're in a crisis situation as well. Hit them with more sanctions. Make life more miserable for the people. That is the stupidity of what's going on. Armed forces in Germany and Italy given greater role in operations to count the disease. Yeah, yeah. March to Mussolini and Heil Hitler. Germany is deploying the Brandeswehr to help the Eurozone's largest economy cope with the coronavirus. 80 million people, 28 dead. And now we got the military on the street. Isn't that great? And in Italy, too. Oh, hey, Italy's in total lockdown. Total lockdown. But what's the big one? Italy's virus death toll tops China's. Hey, wait a minute. If they're in total lockdown and the numbers are going up, hey, your lockdown ain't working. Ah, so it would be a long voice if we didn't do it. You got it. It's elderly people that are dying, that are chronically ill. All the numbers show it. U.S. virus cases surpassed 10,000 out of a population of 327 million people. February 11th, 2020. While everyone is in panic about the coronavirus, officially named COVID-19 by the World Health Organization, there's an even deadlier virus many people are forgetting about, the flu. Globally, the World Health Organization estimates that the flu kills between 290,000 people a year to 650,000. 650,000. Well, what, 300,000? How many have died from Rosie, Queen of Coronavirus? 10,000. 10,000. As I said, the data is there. Look it up. The people that are dying in Italy were dying from the flu before the coronavirus hit. And they're dying in one area, basically. Oh, some other numbers. Flu season is hitting its stride right now in the United States. So far, the Centers for Disease Control has estimated that at least 12,000 people have died from influenza between October 1st and February 1st. And the number of deaths may be as high as 30,000. And how many died in the United States? 200. 230,000 have already died from the flu. Does that mean anything? Does that mean anything? No. This could be worse. Don't tell me what is or what will be. Tell me what is. And you ready? The CDC also estimates that up to 31 million Americans have caught the flu this season, with 210,000 to 370,000 flu sufferers hospitalized. Huh.
hospitalized because of the flu, not the virus. Associated Press, three weeks ago, in a story, excuse me, a week ago, about how Mexico is still letting things happen. And then in the middle of the story, I read this paragraph. Almost everyone recovers from the new virus, which often causes only mild symptoms such as fever and cough. But for some people, particularly older adults and people with pre-existing health problems, it can cause more serious illnesses such as pneumonia. Pneumonia. Almost everyone recovers. But the nation's most populous state is ordering its nearly 40 million residents to stay home. 19 people have died in California, a state of 40 million people. 19. California's Governor Gavin Newsom, his order marks the first statewide mandatory restrictions. This is a moment where we need some straight talk. Yes, yeah, straight talk coming out of the mouth of bullshit from a politician. Straight talk from a politician. And I got a bridge to sell you in Brooklyn. Matter of fact, you could buy it real cheap because prices are going to go way down. We project that roughly 56% of our state's population, 25.5 million people, will be infected by the virus over an eight-week period. Eight-week period. You got it? We're looking at two more months. They're making the numbers up. How does this guy know? Show me scientific proof. Show me scientific proof. I don't have to. Don't you know who I am? So let's see how many die, Governor. Up. Oh. Cuomo orders all non-essential New York workers to stay home. All workers in non-essential businesses across New York State are required to stay home in an effort to combat the spread of coronavirus pandemic. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced at a press conference this morning the executive order, the executive order which I wrote about, talked about, in our Trends Journal and Trends in the News, he made up this thing two weeks ago, slipped this legislation in there so he would give him the power. It didn't exist before. It didn't exist. He gave it to himself. All right. Cuomo acknowledged that his actions, quote, will cause disruption. It will cause businesses to close. It will cause employees to stay at home. I understand that. It will cause much unhappiness. I understand that also. This is a quote. I understand that it will cause unhappiness. Unhappiness? How about suicide? How about suicide? How about deep depression? Closing down all the businesses. Making up laws, making up rules as they go along with no quantitative data, no scientific data, Show me the scientific data. I don't want to know anything else. He said, I accept full responsibility. If someone is unhappy, if somebody wants to blame someone or complain about someone, blame me. There is no one else who is responsible for this decision. Hal Cuomo. How Cuomo, no one else is responsible but me. I am the ruler. All right, you got it. You got one guy telling 20 million people what to do. <sighs> I am in charge. You will follow my orders. Civil fines and mandatory closes of business that don't comply with the new mandate will be enforced beginning on Sunday, Cuomo announced. People over 70, me, or people with underlying conditions are ordered to remain indoors. I can't go out because Cuomo has said I have to stay home. You can't make this stuff up. 60 million people put in lockdown, two states. As of late Friday morning, with 35 deaths, Cuomo said California has reported nearly 1,000 cases and 19 deaths. 35 deaths, 
in a population of 20 million people, and we're on lockdown. War on plastic takes a back seat. You're using plastic now in everything. Yep. Climate change, forget about it. Silicon Valley, Valley hires to gain from mass shift online. I'm mentioning this big trend, more online. Read my book, Trends 2000. I talked about interactive view at universities, and now schools closures spell success for Asia's online education startups. These startups, the, the stocks are, are soaring. It's a whole brand new world, a whole brand new world. And finally, older moderate voters boost Biden. I'm mentioning this because Joe Biden won on Tuesday. Older voters are going out to vote for him, not young people. These candidates are too old for both the, all the young people. And then finally, CIA veterans endorse Biden for president, and so does Tulsi Gabbard. On Wednesday, more than 80 former U.S. spies, CIA station chiefs, diplomats, and other officials of the U.S. national security state, including former leaders of the Department of Homeland Security, Central Intelligence Agency, Federal Bureau of Investigation, and the Department of Defense, issued a statement endorsing former Vice President Joseph Biden. All right? The police state. Oh, and Tulsi Gabbard? Yeah. Another politician. The so-called anti-war candidate, she's supporting Biden with a track record of unblemished voting for murder. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.